How's it going, Airsofters? Welcome back to episode three of my SSG 10 One Jewel HPA Short Stupid Airsoft Sniper Rifle build. Today's episode, we're going to be installing this. This is the Wolverine Bolt. Not to be confused with the Bolt M, this is the Bolt. This is the one that takes the battery. Now, this is going to be done in three stages. We're going to have to change the receiver by drilling it. We're going to have to install the switch into the trigger unit. We're going to have to empty the bolt assembly and install the Wolverine bolt into that as well. Now this bolt does come in this package as well if you buy it with the cylinder. Now you don't need, if, for the SSG-10, you don't need to buy it with this cylinder. It doesn't need it. You can buy it and use this cylinder if you want to, but you will have to chop extra bits off this trigger, namely this piece here, and the SSG-10 handles won't fit on there. Let me just prove it to you. I've got one just here. I think, I can't say for definite, but I think, see, the hole is too big. We've all seen videos like this before. First off, we're gonna start off by drilling this receiver. I've just filmed a video a minute ago just explaining a bit of detail about this receiver compared to the older receiver and where to drill and some measurements. So just watch that just before I measure this one up. With the old SSG-10, it was easy to get the marker for drilling the hole into the receiver to put the airline through because there was this sort of this mold point here which almost centralized where the hole needed to go. But with the newer receivers, it doesn't have that mold point. So what I've done is I've measured precisely a little while ago um, from this drill, uh, from this screw point here, uh, which screws onto the stock, um, to where I need to drill for the airline, and it's 20 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is in a moment is measure precisely 20 millimeters from this, this screw point here, 20 millimeters that way, and drill in the receiver just here. So as explained, I need to measure 20 millimeters to drill the hole for the airline to go through. So what I'm gonna do by doing that, I just wanna get it in a straight line. So I'm just gonna mark a line between these two holes with a pencil and a ruler. So we've got a guideline just there, and now we're gonna measure 20 millimeters. So I'm just gonna take my calipers and I'm gonna measure 20 millimeters on there. So I'm going to measure from the center of this hole here and I'm going to measure 20 millimeters up to this line just here. So that marker there is just where we need to put our hole. Now the hole needs to be a quarter inch. In the UK we tend to work off millimeters. Um, I don't think I've got a quarter inch drill bit. What's a quarter of an inch? Uh, 6.3 millimeters is it? I'm going to drill a small pilot hole first before I go big with the quarter inch hole. Let's go. First up, we're going to start small with a 1.5 mil drill bit. Now we're going up to a 3 mil drill bit. And now we're going 6.5 mil. And there we go, one hole ready for the airline. The hole in the receiver is now drilled and I didn't actually have a quarter inch drill bit. So I used a six and a half mil drill bit and it's a perfect fit for the little part that's got to go inside the hole. Let's take a look inside this packet. So we've got Wolverine patch, we've got the cylinder head. This is the JG bar 10 version. So you'll get, I think the only difference is between the JG bar 10 version and the VSR 10 version is I think don't quote me, I think the cylinder head is different. We've got the um, switch for the trigger and the wiring, and we've got the um, airline as well. Next up, we're gonna take apart this bolt assembly. Now be careful when you take the back end off because there's a little piece there that's on a spring. And it does come out and it will disappear into another dimension if you drop it on the floor. Let's take off the cylinder head. This is under pressure a little bit. It shouldn't be too much. There we go. We're not going to be using the cylinder head. We're not going to be using the piston. We 
Definitely don't need that spring. And we definitely don't need that spring guide. And the problem I had with my last build was this little bit that goes through this um, slot here. As you can see, it's a little bit too big to go all the way down that channel. So what I had to do, and it did grind a little bit as well, so what I had to do was just get a Dremel and make this channel bigger. So I'm now gonna go and do that right now. Now we're going to install the bolt into the cylinder. That one? Is it that one? Let's have a look at what else we've got in there. Yeah. So this is your switch. I'm going to plug that little plug on the end there. I'm just going to put ever such a tiny bit too much there. It won't have just to have a little bit in there. Now we're going to install the bolt into the cylinder. Now this hole here needs to be showing through this channel here. Just gonna bend the cable over, push it in like so. Now you can see where this little thing in my bobby airline threaded thing, whatever it's called, comes into play. So it, it goes in through the receiver and it screws into the hole in the uh, bolt just there. Now we take the cylinder head and that just goes on to, it does thread nicely onto the SSG10 stock cylinder. But what I'm going to do first is, you don't get this with the kit. I like to use a spring. Now you can use a very weak section of an AEG spring that you cut down. Just make sure you cut all the sharp edges off. I'm not sure what this spring is off to be honest with you. But what I like to do is I put that just over the end of the uh, the cylinder head there and then I put it in like so and that is what gives me the return on the handle. I don't know why Wolverine haven't included this. There must be a reason for them not to have done it and I don't know what it is. I really should ask. But I put thousands of rants through my other SSG 10 with a Wolverine bolt in it and had no issues at all with that return spring in there. So I don't know why. If you know why, what the reason is that they don't include a spring in the kit to return the handle, just let me know. There we go. So that is all good to go. Just a little update, the spring that I was initially gonna use, I have had to do away with. That It just wasn't um, man enough and it wasn't quite long enough. So I've just cut down an, uh, an AG spring. I'm gonna use this, it seems to work. And now on to stage three. The trigger. This is our wiring harness and switch and this needs to be screwed onto the side of the trigger. You do get two screws and a drill bit to drill the hole in the side of the trigger unit. You will only be able to use one screw on the SSG10 trigger unit because the, for the bottom screw, the trigger is in the way. Right, let's commence then. Let's commence. You do now need to take apart your trigger unit. This is the fun bit because bits go everywhere. Unfortunately as well, with the SSG10 trigger unit, when the switch is in place, there's pretty much no space to keep the safety lever. So you will be losing your safety lever. Now when you take this apart and see it all in pieces, you must be an adult and don't cry. Ready? Oh my god. I've only used this once and look at the grime and Dirt in that. We've now got our trigger in pieces. Now there's going to be some parts that we don't need. We don't need the sear and the spring. We don't need the safety and the safety screw. We need this little spring just here. Now this looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Let me try and do this. Got one piece there, that piece just there. That piece goes in there like that. And that goes on top. Let me spin that around for you. Now I made that look easy because I just spent the last half an hour trying to figure out how it goes. 
There we go. So we need the four screws, the spring, and there is the trigger. Let me just demonstrate to you how the this trigger actually works. So let's get the camera a bit closer. When this switch is mounted, it needs to be mounted in such a way, you see the little orange switch just there. So when, when we move the trigger, you see that it pushes in the switch. So you really want to take your time in finding the position that you want your switch to sit in. So I don't want to put too much pressure on the switch so when I'm pulling the trigger it pushes the, um, the switch too much. But I also don't want much play there. So take your time in finding that place that's, that's perfect for you. It's only a very, very weak drill bit so don't put too much pressure onto it. Now we've got a hole drill for the switch, we can now put the trigger all back together again. The spring just needs to sit inside there, and it's got to be on a tension, so this is going to be tricky. So if we now push that under tension, <clears throat> put the top on, can we get that on? We can, now we can put screw in while well, it's under tension we've got one in let's get another one in can we get that fourth one in you see where it goes i think we've got it we have let's just tighten these all up now Is working. I've marked out where the trigger lies. I'm just going to cut a piece of this double sided tape on, put it on, which will hold the trigger in place. Now we're going to go ahead and fit the switch. So you're going to need one of these small silver screws that are provided, and you're going to need a 1.3 millimeter hex bit to screw it in. Now these will tap into the hole that you drilled. And there we have it, the switch is now fitted to your trigger. Well there we go, I think this thing is all ready to go back together again now. I don't seem to have any parts left over, which is always a good thing. Let's try and reassemble this thing. Okay, I'm just gonna wing this a little bit really. I think I remember how this all goes back together again. We're gonna need our the, the, the hole that we drilled in the receiver I'm going to need to line that up down that channel in the cylinder and make sure that the Wolverine bolt, the hole, the threaded hole in the Wolverine bolt is in view in this hole. And then we're going to take this thing that I don't, still don't know what it's called, and it's got some Loctite on there, and screw it in to, that goes directly in to the Wolverine bolt. And there's no way to tighten that up with like a spanner or anything. So we're just going to have to do that finger tight, or dare I say it with a pair of pliers. And there we go, very, very gently still. I think that's enough. Oh, gotcha. There we go, fish that out. Now we're going to take the outer barrel and everything else, the hop unit and stuff. Don't forget your glide ring as well. Your glide ring goes in. And make sure you don't cross thread it. Make sure it's all screwing in nice and easily because it will screw in nice and easily. If you're having any trouble screwing it in, you'd likely cross threaded it and bugger it up. So this has to now feed through, through the, the trigger there. So now, just pull the trigger back. That should go through, yep, there we go. Well, it wasn't too much of a ball like. Is everything still moving nice and smoothly? Yes, it is still moving nice and smoothly. Excellent. Now we can just put these, plug these two together. That's pretty much the install there.
Let's give it a try then. Let's just make sure everything powers on okay. Let's plug a battery into it. And make sure we can hear the solenoid working okay. Can we hear the solenoid? Excellent. That's a, that's a good sign. The solenoid's working okay. Let's plug in the airline, put some air to it and see if we're getting air going through the system and there's no leaks. The connector just pushes onto the airline like that. Simple as that. If you want to get it off, you just need to push this little black thing in and it pulls out. But once it's in, that's not going anywhere. All right. Let's plug in some air <laughs> and see what happens. Please, no air leaks. 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 No air leaks. It's working. I've just fitted the connector to the stock. I've had to, unfortunately, opt for it underneath the, the hand grip again. It's not a great place to have it. I, even if you glue it on there, there's so much movement from the hose and everything. It just does pull this base plate out. So gluing, I'm going to have to glue it, maybe, and then I'm going to have to scapper tape it. They don't really supply enough cabling and it doesn't come out very far. You can see, I don't know if you can see, I've got my finger on it right up there. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass to connect the battery to. You can buy JST extensions. I'll probably put one on the screen right now that you can get off eBay. You know, buy yourself one of those and you can extend it and it just comes out to a comfortable length. And we were running at just above 120 PSI on 0.4 gram BBs. Uh, so we're, we're hitting 1.1, just short of 1.1 joules, about 1.1 joules with a 0.4 gram BB. And it, it was over hop, it, it could over hop a 0.4 gram BB. So I could probably run it on heavier. Thanks for watching this episode. I'll see you in episode four for camouflaging. I'm gonna paint it, camouflage it, paint it. And I'm gonna make this long chunky bolt handle a bit shorter. Thanks for watching, see you in the next episode.